We're in trouble now, folks. We fix this F-250, fixed it, quote unquote. Been about a month. And now, we got yanked in on a flatbed. The guy says it's still doing the same thing that it was doing. Of course, the battery's dead, so let's drag out a charger. Connection here and there. Couple hours. This is John. Full nuclear. So we're gonna nuke that thing for a little while, get some charge back in the bag, crank over and see what's going on. Uh, according to the fellow, when I spoke with him before he towed it here, is is it was doing the same thing. You know, it's lights would light up, you know, it sounded really like no communication. He said he was gonna change some relays and do some stuff under the hood, so I don't know what he's done. Um, I was pretty definitive with our Diag last time. If I remember, it was the run start relay or something along those lines. And we we're losing power to a group of fuses. So we're gonna look and see. Perhaps we just got a crap part. Can't doubt it. But, um, you know, maybe. I don't know if this really went bad. If this really went bad, that would be kind of weird. But we're gonna check that row of fuses, providing it doesn't start, and see, you know, do we have the same thing? We're gonna start right with our same Diag and then kind of tread it backwards. You know, did we just serve a connection by freaking around in there? I don't know, we're gonna find out. Oh, yes, before we, at least we had a click, now we got nothing. Let's go see if that fuse is dead under the hood. Test so it works. I think it was this whole row of fuses here. Yeah, and those are all dead. Yeah, it was this row here, if I remember correctly. All right, so that's pretty interesting. What did we miss there, fellas? There's our relay. Let me look down inside that box. So this was kind of weird. I went out, I see our uh, charging voltage was a little high here on the scan tool. And because we had the battery charger on a 40 amp right there while it was charging, I didn't leave it on nuclear. I just do that to be funny for you guys, but um, we had a charging at 40 amps, and I, and I see the charging bolt is a little high, so I went out to shut the charger off. Oh, hold on a minute here, folks. So like I said, I went out to shut the charger off and put it down on a two amp setting, and then all of a sudden I hear everything light up in the truck. You know, so I'm like, oh, it should start, and it started, and it started. So we got it inside, um, just out of curiosity. So perhaps was I creating a problem having uh, too high a battery voltage? Well, I've never seen that before. Um, maybe we just got lucky. Maybe it's a, a terminal fitment issue down in there. Okay, I got a few questions for myself at this point. Let's go see what's up. keys on so I guess we're gonna have to kind of disregard that for a moment I don't want to sit here and keep nuking it um, the voltmeter on the Altels are, are anywhere from a half to eight tenths of a volt off maybe it's just a big old coincidence but it sure seemed I mean it was like the second I clicked it from 40 amp down to 2 amp so maybe coincidence but kind of interesting I did take so you know, we hear the clicking going on over there. You can see I took that terminal and I tweaked it just a little bit. And then when I stuck that in, I did get you know this whole row of fuses to light back up. This is our run start relay. Of course, you know, we're causing all kinds of issues in there. Pulling that in now. Um, let me find my test light. We can check and see. Of course, we have this, it's this row of fuses, right? I haven't looked up any diagram, I'm just trying to pull it off memory. I haven't even edited the video that we made a month ago. That's sometime back in February, I think it was. Now we're, actually, I think it was a month ago to the date, because I looked when he called. It's February 23rd when we did the first one, and I think it's March 23rd today, or March 24th. So. Yep, so now these. These are all dead. So just out of curiosity, 
we may let me be being kind of foolish here but let's just see okay so we have power oh this is interesting make sure i'm not losing it here so this is a one of the powers for the load side okay but on the control side of this relay i mean one of these legs should have power one should have ground And I only have power on the load side. That's that's very interesting. Okay, we would we would have checked this last time. We would have checked. I know for certain if we had if we were missing power or control. Okay, so maybe I'm just barking up the wrong tree by uh, by tweaking on this. Okay, I was thinking maybe a pin fitment issue or something, but I would have thought we would have checked that last time. I can't remember for sure. But it appears that we're missing power on one of the control sides here. Load side, you got big terminals. We got power on one of them. Of course, then when the relay turns on, it you know jumpers through. But I say at this point, we get a diagram and see maybe by taking that in and out, maybe something inadvertently turns off, but you know, who controls this uh, relay? Let's find that out. I'm curious, just a second. Yeah, so right now I have no control of my windows either. And I'm assuming if we stick this back in, make sure you guys are in a safe spot. I think you're safe. I assume we have a no start. Yeah, so we have a no start again. We're kind of back to where we were outside, but thankfully we're inside. So that's good. Hallelujah. And we've also discovered it appears that we have no power on the control side. Okay, so I think it's a different, you know, similar symptom, different problem with more symptoms, aka like none of the windows and none of that crap work. But I, man, I'm pretty sure last time they did, I'm semi-observant i would have thought i would notice that anyhow let's get let's get cranking we'll hook my uh before i hook up that wiring diagram i've got this brand new tool i've never even used it yet <laughs> i just literally just got it uh it's the aes wave you activate and it's a it allows us to do relay testing outside of the box so if we're hooked to ground here this is going to allow us to manually activate the relay that was there so we have no power there, but we should be able to turn this on. Okay, and we can, we can feed power, you know, simulate turning the relay on and off, but it allows us, it's kind of neat, gets us up out of the box and it's got a current loop on here. If you want to measure current flowing through 30 and 87 or 30 and 87A, and then it allows us to measure the control side too, 85 and 86. So on a relay, typically number 30, pin 30 is your full-time power. It's going to be the, the load or it's gonna be the power for the load side of the relay. So you know, one of these maxi fuses, something goes into pin 30. And if it's a uh, five pin relay, you're gonna have pin 87, which is gonna be when the relay is activated, and pin 87A when the relay's you know, turned off. That's which way the power flow goes. So when we flick this on, we send power from pin 30 to pin 87. Lights this up, okay? When the relay is functioning normally, pin 85 or 86, one of those two is going to have power. I don't know if there's any standardization to that or not, but I've seen it both ways. One's gonna have power and one's going to be ground side switched in this case. So let's see if we have our ground side control. Let's just find out what all we're missing. So I'm gonna hook my test light to a power source here. You gotta be careful with this because you don't want your uh, vice grips to fall over into something. Let's see. Okay, we have ground. So let's just try pin 85. Okay, our test light lights up. So that should come on and off with the key, I'm assuming, because that should be our control wire because the other one here, yeah, so that's gonna be our control. So if I shut the key off, I'm assuming that's gonna go off. And it does, so key on, key off, key on. So our relay is receiving control. However, we are missing power on the control side. So we're back to where we started, but I just wanted to show you that tool 
That way there you guys can see what kind of testing we're doing outside of the relay box. We're missing power here. And we need to see where that comes from. We can certainly jumper power to this. Um, being unfamiliar with the tool, I don't know if that's a great idea. I, I can't see why it wouldn't be. I'm just thinking out loud here. Um, but before we do that, let's grab a wiring diagram and see where is that power for the control side supposed to come from and is that related to any of the other issues that we're having? I'm assuming it is. The wiring diagram says fuse number 45. So let's look in here. Let me just get this oriented correctly so we're not... Ford fuse box, this can be kind of confusing sometimes. Uh, let me just figure this out. I think it goes this way. Okay, yeah, because we put a little white paint marker on there for that relay. Okay, so fuse 45 is supposed to be this one right here. So 47, 46, 45. Let's see if it has power on it. Our test light still works. Oh, and it does. Okay, let me make sure I'm on the right fuse. 45, yep. Yeah. So, we've got this relay. Well, that's curious, isn't it? Um, because that has power. I wanna make sure that I'm in this thing the right way. Yeah, we are. Okay, so, all right. Well, let me double check my wiring diagram, but uh, if this is the case, we should have power here, and we don't. I'm going to double check my wire diagram, but if that's the case, then the problem's in the bottom of the fuse box. It would have to be. There's got to be a loop of wire, because I think fuse 45, let's go look on the diagram, because that's the run start relay this brown with violet we know this one works because this is the control side that's the ground side of the relay this is what we're missing right here bring it down around town fuse 45 and that appears why would fuse 45 be a 10 amp fuse and all it does is run the control side of a relay mm. I mean that would need to be like a 1 amp circuit because this is really is insignificant, it's nothing. So that's weird. I We have to follow the facts. I'm gonna ch double check an OEM diagram to be sure. But according to this, we have a broken wire between here and here, or the other thing we could have is just crappy pin fitment in, in, in fuse number 45. Let me set you down. Uh, which one was 45 again, this one? Obviously our fuse is good, but yeah well, it looks pretty dang nice from up here <laughs> yeah I don't see anything I don't see any weird monkey business and let's go I'll just wiggle this fuse just for poop and laughter here yeah Yeah, it's gotta be broke under the box. Let me double check an OEM diagram. Well, we might be opening Pandora's box here, but we're gonna give it the old college try. Follow the facts, baby. Um, I've unhooked the battery. Not super familiar with cords. I don't know if we have enough room if we unhook the battery cable going to this. If we're going to have enough room to slip it up and do what we have to do. Uh, so I'm not real sure. But let's uh, grab something. Oh, maybe nothing. Oh, yeah, I guess grab nothing. I was going to grab a screwdriver, but it looks like the tabs kind of just pop up on their own here. Yep, I think I'm going to have to unhook the battery cable here. Let's 
recently. Can't really tell. Um, tell you what, instead of keeping you guys here in suspense, I'm gonna fiddle with this thing for a while to see how how we can gain access to whatever we need to gain access to. Because I don't really know. Um, it just feels kind of tight. I see how the wires come into it here. But I don't really quite understand how it comes apart quite yet. So let me fiddle with that. It looks like maybe I can take the bottom case off. I'm gonna unhook the battery cable because that might be holding us. And then I'll come get you guys once I uh, kind of get some things figured out, explain to you what's up. Frick, man. I'll tell you what, boys. GM makes the most unreliable, least longest lasting truck on the road. But god dang, they don't do stuff this freaking stupid. Um, th this is just asinine, folks. This is all one piece of the entire harness. This non-repairable, non-serviceable item. What a stupid freaking design. Even Chrysler knows this. But I tell you what, you can get it out and get it this far, top of the morning to you. Mother lover. Dude, that pissed me off. Latches on the back of this box, way up under the firewall. I don't know what you're supposed to do. I took the air box out of the way. But give me a break. Break me off a piece of your Kit Kat bar. I'd like to find the engineer that freaking made this thing. What's the matter with a good old connector, dude? Oh, look at that. Guess we can quit pissing and moaning. Pink, there's our broken wire. <laughs> staring us right in the face or at least a broken wire let's see where's it run to I'm gonna fuse gray with the red stripe I'm pretty sure I remember that from the diagram nobody's ever been in here everything was taped up there was no tabs broken so this is a hokey pokey right from the factory defect in the wire um, fortunately there's enough wires sticking out there. We should be able to get a crimp and seal connector on it. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Let me go get a pair of wire strippers. And I just tell you what, stuff like this makes me hate my job. <sighs> Calm down, dude. So what I'm wondering, well, first of all, this is, let's admit this is super bizarre because I'm gonna to have to go back and watch the first video. I mean, I know I lived that moment, but I don't recall right offhand. There's no way I misdiagnosed this the first time and was losing power on, I don't know, maybe I did. Maybe I'm an idiot. I, I would have checked, I know I would have checked for power on the control side I don't know. Maybe I won't publish any of these videos. They're, they're both stripped. Before anybody asks, uh, these are the snap. I call them the hammerhead strippers. Allows you to get in there straight. That's part number from Snap-on. Maybe this is all my fault. Maybe I should just give up. Not be a mechanic anymore. I'm thinking we're going to have to solder this one because I'm not so sure. I got these wires stretched so freaking tight right now. I don't know if I can get in here and do what I gotta do with a crimper. I know I can solder them, but... Let's see if we can get in there. Get it crimped off and... We'll be good. I have to charge her over there on two amps, but I know it sounds like ridiculously loud on the camera. I'm gonna slide that baby down on there. Let's see if we can't get in here to give it a proper crimp. I think I totally missed. didn't 
feel like a real idiot if I miss the diagnosis. Because what are the odds really out of the hundreds of circuits on the car to have the same circuit have the similar problem or the same problem? I think the uh, no crank portion of it there uh, must have been just a strong coincidence or there's two issues. That seems kind of bizarre. That's still in my mind. This thing's still in my mind. Let me go get something to heat that up with. A little solder there. It's got a little heater tip on it here so we can heat this up without melting everything else in the box. Alright, she's all melted and solidified. This thing will probably go back together easier than it came apart, but there's about three zip ties that are not getting put back. And they're one of them's way down here on this lower plastic tray where the harness comes up, they're all zip tied. One up here I might put back, but this harness is all zip tied to all the plastic because it's supposed to be, you take this out and you throw this whole thing away and replace the wiring harness is how it's supposed to be done. But one thing we have to be cautious of, or I have to be cautious of, is the wires here to make sure that they're, when I click it back onto the bottom half of this tray that they're not gonna get pinched. So I'm gonna work on that, I'm gonna do it off camera. Cause I'm gonna swear a little bit. And uh, I don't wanna do that on the YouTube. So let me uh, get after this thing. fish back down in there put that relay back in and falls right in the world it should start just fine now Flying lessons. Oh no, here it is. Hey, we'll stick this back on there. I was able to get that bottom all back in and clicked on. It's just a pisser because I mean everything is just so tight. You know, there's no uh, no room back in there to do anything. Probably if you took the brake booster out, it'd give you a little more room to flip it around, but. I don't the slid want to go on now. I'm curious to know if I misdiagnosed it the first time or it was just a situation like the whole battery charger deal. You know, every time we checked it, everything was there that we needed. I don't know. He'd been driving it for a while. So, whatever. It's fixed now. I'm done. We're done. Thanks for watching.